We're joined now by Mike Preston from the Baltimore Sun. Many are familiar with Mike's report card that he releases following Ravens games. The Ravens losing, of course, in a heartbreaker to Las Vegas earlier today. Mike, thanks for being with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, we wanted to just kind of run through your report card because there's a lot to dive into. Okay. So why don't we start with Lamar Jackson, start with the quarterback. That's kind of where everything starts, right? And Lamar was statistically not awful today. Uh, what do you have him graded? I gave him a C minus because I, I think he missed a lot of receivers that were open. A, a couple guys where they could have had some yak after the reception, but he, he missed them. And then in crunch time. I mean, the last two or three possessions, see, they didn't get a first down. Or they got one first down in the final 12 minutes. That can't happen, especially when you're making $50 million a year. You have to be the guy. So he didn't get it done. And, and, and at times he looked a little lost when, once the pressure got to him. So uh, it's far from the Kansas City game that we saw a week ago. So I, I kind of graded him down a little bit, gave him a C-. minus. Derrick Henry and the running backs – couldn't really get it going in the first half. I mean, negative yardage for much of it. Had a couple big chunk plays there in the second. What was your grade for the running back room? Well, in, you know, the running backs, I thought Derrick Henry finally became the closer. You know, in the second half, they started using him a little bit more. I think he had five, had seven yards on five carries in the first half. And I think he finished up with like 89, which is a pretty good day. That's the role you want him to play is to come in and close out the game. But offensively, he couldn't get it done. He couldn't self save them either. It's like uh, Lamar didn't have the magic wand. Derrick Henry couldn't close him out. And it really goes back to the offensive line. I mean, that's where the game is won and lost. If your offensive line and your defensive line win games or, or, or do it consistently, you're probably going to win most games. They can't get it done. Offensively and defensively, they did today. But offensively, they can't get it done. They're not giving the quarterback enough time. So, um... Derrick Henry, I think he gave him a C plus, but the offensive line, I gave him a D. The receivers, I gave a, a, a C. Um, I, th I thought he did a nice job of getting some of the guys involved, especially Mark Andrews early. But again, when you don't have time to throw, it makes all the difference in the world. I want to dive a little bit deeper into that grade for the offensive line, Mike. A D, I think, may be exactly where you would put him because – Man, we saw some breakdowns. Lele letting in Max Crosby a couple of times. What did you see from the offensive line that led to that D grade? Well, you, you know, part of it is it's not just Max Crosby because he's a great player. But still, you go into the game and you're saying, hey, he might be the best defensive end in the National Football League. Well, don't you want to double team him? Why is he on Patrick McCarry one on one? That, that should never happen. Two, he starts stunning inside because he knows he could be Falele on the inside. And that's where they got him a couple times as well. So you look at Voorhees as the, the other guard, and you look at him up the middle, they're weak. But you kind of expected that because they lose three starters from a year ago when he had the top rushing game in the NFL. And then all of a sudden, you lose, you lose three starters. You can lose one. You can lose two at the most. But when you lose three, you're asking for trouble, and they got it. And like Eric DaCosta was saying, when you pay a guy like Lamar Jackson $50 million, you have to make sacrifices and cuts somewhere. Yeah. And he made that clear decision to make that on the offensive line, and it's showing so far through two weeks. But let's switch over to the other side of the ball, Mike, and the defensive line. Namdi Matabike was stuffing the run, as mm -hmm. were the rest of the defensive line for the Ravens. They didn't put up numbers, and they played particularly well, although that allowed Gardner Minshew to make some... Uh, throws 30 okay. for 38 in the game let's talk though before we get to the secondary and how they cover the wide receivers and Minshew let's talk about the defensive line and how you assess them well I, I thought the outside linebackers played well uh Kyle Van Nui um Owe Adafi Owe um I I thought those guys did a nice job they had five sacks and uh they had a lot of pressures the problem is 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 when you're playing defense and then your offense loses that rhythm, and you saw that last week with um, uh, the Raiders when they played the Chargers, by the second half you start to wear down a little bit. And you saw that in this game where their their offense is struggling and their defense is saying, oh, we, we saw this last week. Lamar was just making a lot of plays, but we, we don't have a playmaker right now. 
And you, you saw that kind of happen today where they just kind of wilted under pressure. Ideally, you want your defense, especially in Baltimore, in this city, you want your defense on the field in crunch time. They had them out there. But, hey, in the final 12 minutes, you give up two field goals and a touchdown, you deserve to lose because ideally that's the situation you want and it didn't happen. Well, it happened and they couldn't get it done. So they deserve to lose and they lost. And you would put them, what, a, about a B range for the linebackers or outside well, I, I linebackers? The linebackers? I thought the linebackers, I gave them a B plus. The defensive line, I gave B, B minus. I, I thought they played very well yep. up front. I thought they controlled the run. I mean, they, they only had like four yards in the first half rushing. Um, they did a nice job. It's just that you're just out there so much that you start to wear down. And that's what you saw what happened to the Ravens. You, you know, where your linebackers are just kind of pushing, pushing, and then you're chasing the quarterback around, and all of a sudden you start to wilt a little bit, and they wilted under pressure. That's exactly what happened to this football team today. Well, a lot of that pressure was applied via the air. Gardner Minshew tossing it out. Brock Bowers was wide open a lot of times. Devontae Adams was kind of chopping up the secondary, whether that be Brandon Stevens or Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey had a big interception, but it was kind of just a gift. It was placed right, right in his hands. How did right. you see the uh, secondary working throughout the game? I thought they played well early in the game, but then I, I thought Brandon Stevens got tired. I thought Marlon Humphrey got tired. And uh, Adams, uh, they just started making big plays. And, and they went after those guys. And we'll, we'll take it a little bit further, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. We'll talk about the coaching. Um, I, I saw it a week ago in Kansas City where guys were wide open, and you start saying, whoa, that's not supposed to happen. This is not. This is the National Football League. Guys aren't supposed to be that wide open. And then all of a sudden, you see it again today, and you say, you, you got to make some adjustments. You, you got to look at your coaching staff a little bit more. You got to get more out of your offense. You got to get more out of your defense. And John Harbaugh, you got to look at yourself. I mean, uh, you, you blew two challenges today. Um, that's not a good thing. So it's it's more than just a secondary. It, it's this team, for some reason, can't find itself. And I don't know if they're going to find themselves by next week because Dallas got spanked by the Saints, and they're going to Dallas next week. And then they got Josh Allen coming here on Sunday night the following week. Oh, as I wrote about in tomorrow's paper, the sky isn't falling, but there's a lot of dark clouds around Baltimore right now. Yeah, and then not to mention the Bengals, who just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chiefs following yeah, the Bills the week so, after that. I mean, there's a very real world that the sky could be falling here, but there are adjustments to be made. And let's go there, Mike. Let's talk a little bit about the coaching staff and talk about how John Harbaugh uh, called this game, whether that be the challenges, whether that be the adjustments made at halftime or lack thereof. What did you see that assessed him at a D grade? Well, here's what I saw with the challenges. And, and, and I don't always agree with John's challenges because I think they're, you know, you have to have evidence that's clearly, um, that's right there, that's, that's definite to say this happened. Because if you don't, you're wasting a timeout. And you saw that last week against Kansas City where they blew a couple of timeouts early in the game. And then you saw it today where, whoa, no, no, no. You could see one instant replay. I don't know who the assistant coaches are that, that are telling him, like, you need to challenge that. They're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. You could see it up here. And uh, you make those and you lose timeouts. And then you look at their, their offense. I mean, it, 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 and I call it the health to scout their offense because you never know what the heck they're going to do. Their best play is still Lamar Jackson running around, making plays out of nothing. Um, that has to change. You have to find a system to, to fit his ability, and they haven't been able to do that. Not this year. All right. And then you look at defensively, and you're saying, why are guys so wide open? Last week, they blamed it on um, changes in personnel and throwing three or four different guys out there from Kansas City, and it kind of shook them up. Well, we didn't see that with the Raiders today. They basically said, these are the guys we're going to win with. We're, we're going to send them out there, and you're going to stop them. And they couldn't stop them. So what happens then? And then you go back and say, well, Mike McDonald last year, he got it done. And it's, it's basically the same group. It hasn't changed much. It's the same group from a year ago, basically the same guys. Well, what's the difference? 
Well, then you got to look at your D coordinator. And last week it said, okay, first game, Andy Reid, Kansas City, AOC Championship game. We'll give him a week. But then it happens again this week against the Raiders, who, who had only seven days to prepare as the Ravens had 10. They flew from the West Coast to the East Coast. Um, they have a quarterback named Gardner Minshew, Roman, Roman numeral two, okay? He's not Tom Brady. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's Gardner Minshew. Give me a break. And you lost to this guy? That should not happen on opening day in Baltimore? No way. And you yeah. were the, the best, the team with the best one loss record in the AFC last year? Come on. Yeah. You, 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 there's, there's some explaining to do um, come tomorrow. John, John's got a lot of things to talk about tomorrow. He certainly does. He certainly does, Mike. Gardner Minshew has the Ravens number. He beat he beat the Ravens as a Colt last year, if you'd remember as well. Yes, he did. Yeah. And, and and you watch this game and you're saying, there's no way that will happen again. Okay. Oh man. He got lucky last year, maybe, but then to come back and and do what he did to the Ravens in the final 12 minutes of this game. Interesting. Very, yeah, a lot to very, assess. A lot to very. assess, Mike. And of course, we always appreciate you. Looking forward to talking with you following games throughout the rest of this season. Mike Preston from the Baltimore Sun. you got to read his column tomorrow as well. We appreciate you as always. All righty. Take care, man. Thank you. Thank you.